coat of arms. Hey guys, what's going on? Corey here with Coat of Arms TV, and today we are exploring the world of night vision. More particular to speaking, the 3351s. And I'm excited to get into this, considering the fact that I know very little about night vision, so we're gonna be kind of learning along together. And the fact that I haven't had my hands on night vision before isn't unheard of considering the rig that was sent to me for fifteen dollars to $20,000 all in for all of this equipment. So I gotta give a huge shout out to Nick from Tactical Imports. I'm looking forward to you learning along with me in this episode of Coat of Arms. We're gonna go over some of the functionality of the night vision goggles, and not specifically just the goggles, but the mount itself, because the mount is actually really vital to the operation. This particular one that we're using is the KDEX low profile flip up mount. And uh, with one button click uh, right into your helmet mount, uh, goes in real good. And then if you wanna flip them down, you just kinda push the button here, and then you just kinda pull down on them. It almost feels like a bit of resistance, and um, then they kinda lock into place uh, really well. For more information on this KDEX low profile mount, go check out our previous video. We do an extensive job at covering the mount itself. They have the ability to um, orientate for like really narrow spaced eyes um, or eyes that are kind of far apart. Now there are two switches on the front here. You've got your power on, which is uh, the first dial, and then the second dial there is going to be kind of like your your uh, light dial, um, kind of like similar to a camera when you're trying to adjust uh, the aperture, um, letting a little bit more light in or a little bit less light. The little flip up things in the front that look like lens caps, um, they do function like a lens cap of a, of a camera or a lens, um, but the idea on them is um, they also have a pinhole at the end of it, so you can use them in kind of like a little bit of a higher light scenario. And you wanna be careful uh, when utilizing this in a lot of light because the tubes are very sensitive, especially these specific tubes are upgraded. The adjustment is just like a lens. You can focus them close, like within like, you know, like five yards, 10 yards, and then so on and so forth. If you're trying to see from a different uh, perspective, uh, from far away or from up close, and that's on, on the outside or the furthest part of the lens, on the outside of the lens. And the inside of the lens, um, where your eyes are kind of uh, the closest to, um, that's where you're gonna adjust your diopter. The mount itself is, uh, again, if you need to remove them in a pinch really quick, you have the ability to do that, and uh, one push, and and they pop right off. It also has that ratcheting system that kind of gives you the ability to push it forward to your eyes and then push it away from your eyes um, to fine tune it to each individual user, which was fantastic. Now, when you're pairing uh, the night vision goggles, you wanna be able to use um, a laser system, right? Like an IR laser system. It gives you the ability to see um, where you're shooting if you're gonna be uh, shooting with these things. So if you're in a military law enforcement situation, it gives you the ability to kind of be uh, covert and um, not really let anybody else know what you're doing. I can indicate to a partner that I would be with or a team member um, a location just by pointing my laser in that direction. This particular one is a new con. This one's the LAM 3G. And um, the, this unit was a, a really, really high power. Uh, again, these are not cheap either, um, but you know, you really get what you pay for. We'll take a look outside the door and be able to see that beam from far away. Yeah, it's pretty dark across the street, as you can see. You see that? I'll turn the beam on. Can you see me turning the beam on? Can you see it moving across the street? Kind of in a wooded area over there. You make that out. That's approximately um, uh, 300 yards, I'd say. At the, the furthest distance there, probably close to 300 yards, the beam reaches no problem. Uh, there's a button up top here. You see that? Right here. 
Um, I push that two times. That gives me the beam, great big powerful beam there. If it's too bright, if it's giving off a little bit too much splash, I can uh, dim that down with this little switch right here. And then it also has other settings. I can go to a green beam, which I'm able to see uh, with the naked eye, which is fine. And then I can turn this off and then I can switch it to this setting. And then I can turn that off and I can switch it to a double, double beam. And then turn that off. That gives me a little bit of a strobe. And just like you'd see in a scope, you've got your windage and elevation knobs to be able to fine tune where that laser's going in order to be able to zero it into your rifle. And then a quick release mount on this one, which was uh, very easy to snap in and out of the Picatinny rail. The other Nucon uh, light IR laser combo, um, this particular Nucon optic uh, was a pistol mounted version. So something that was a little bit more compact, again, uh, low and high, had the ability to do strobe light as well. Uh, it's a little bit more of an affordable option if you're just getting into a unit that you needed a really good laser IR laser option. When you're getting into, well, why would I want just a, a, a monocular, which is a single tube, or goggles, which is kind of like the double tube, or like a PVS-7, which is like double eye, single tube. The big answer for this is field of view for me. Um, so I had the ability to get some of those like uh, Amazon and night vision binoculars, um, you know, trying to test them out to kind of give you guys a comparable. Cause I know a lot of you guys out there will be like, I can just pay, you know, $400 for a pair of these and I'm sure they'll be good enough. And the answer is they're good for, for certain applications, but for like the concept of operating or like coming in and out, depth perception is important. Uh, you know, when you're trying to grab things, pick things up or move around to open a door, come through a door jam you're not doing that with those goggles with those uh, those binocular ones from Amazon you just not I'm just telling you right now I tried <laughs> also too, what I'd like to mention is we didn't on camera show the PVS 14 uh, because we're actually using it in front of our camera lens so everything you see with me operating um, with the goggles um, in in the pitch dark and you're just seeing me in a night vision view that is the image from the PVS 14 and it's incredible I'm gonna put up right here you can take a look at at um, the night vision goggles from Amazon we used for the same purpose of recording. It is like a, a night and day comparison in terms of quality. What you're seeing right now with the light on is what I'm seeing with these minus color um, for the most part. And watch when I shut the light off, this is connected to what we would see um, with the naked eye, the camera iris and everything set, the ISO is set to what my naked eye can see. So what you see in the camera is what my eye can see, which is basically nothing. I can kind of make out the red exit sign, uh, as you guys can probably see faintly in the back. Outside of that, I see nothing. I can't see the hand in front of my face, like an inch in front of my face, I see nothing. So, um, and again, to put into perspective, you put the MVGs on and this is like daylight in this room and then some. So you can imagine just how effective, uh, you know, the utilization of these MVGs actually would be. So another thing to note, um, again, the benefits of having uh, the additional tools, uh, having an indicator on the back of the helmet here, uh, as, you see, as you've seen in the video, when this is flicked on, I can set it so that it's just regular daylight if we don't have night vision option. You can see a red light on at all times and you can set it for a white blinking light. So you can see the other guys on your team where they are and differentiate between whoever is out there. You could also click it so that it's infrared only. So only guys with MVGs on your team would be able to see your IR lights that are on or you can set it so that it's also blinking. So this really gives you the ability in an environment that could be a bit chaotic if you have two, three, ten guys to differentiate who is who and the what is what. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Coat of Arms TV. We tackled the world of night vision, very new to me. So I would really appreciate if you guys had any questions, comments, or even suggestions um, that you could add to this conversation and help the community uh, have a better understanding of what's the right fit for them. And as always, if you have some equipment that you want us to review, please leave it in the comments below. For more information on any of the night vision products, check the links in the description below or go to tacticalimports.ca. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and as always, leave us a comment. We wanna hear what you have to say. 
If you want to support us, you can go to coatofarmstv.com for all of our latest apparel. This is Coat of Arms.